Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about different weights in selenium. That is implicit weight, explicit weight and fluent weight. And also we are going to discuss about differences between them in detail. So I'm going to explain the implicit weight based on an example. So you can see on the screen uh, the login page of the Gmail. So I have a script uh, which navigates to the gmail.com and then enters the mail in the email text box and then it's going to click on the next button here then it's going to display the second screen where the script is going to enter the password in the password field and then clicks on the next button so this is the script i have and that you can see on the screen so this is a script uh, which does the uh, navigation to Gmail and entering username and password. So in the first line we have uh, initialization of the web driver and then we have the line which is highlighted which is uh, setting the implicit weight on the driver. So that is uh, driver.manage.timeouts.implicit weight and we have 60 seconds of timeout. So this is a timeout uh, for the implicit weight. And then as discussed, it's navigating to gmail.com and finding element for the uh, mail text box and clicking on next button and finding element of a password text field and clicking on next button. So uh, one thing we should uh, remember is implicit weight will last for entire session. So the implicit weight is set on the driver. So as long as the driver is alive, implicit weight is alive. So to explain this, uh, for example, uh, here uh, you can see uh, driver.getgmail.com, uh, which is navigating to the gmail.com. If there is a, a spelling mistake here, then it's going to throw an exception. So when it throws the exception, since implicit weight is already applied on the driver, it's going to wait till 60 seconds and then it's going to throw the exception. So similarly, since I told that uh, implicit weight is alive on the driver, so this implicit weight is also applicable on all the further actions. So you can see, uh, so it's applicable on finding element of email uh, text box and as well as finding element for the next uh, button. So it's applicable on all the actions until the driver is alive. So uh, you may ask that you told that it's going to wait till uh, uh, 60 seconds uh, when the step is failed. So what is the use of that uh, just waiting uh, for 60 seconds? So it just don't wait for the 60 seconds, but it's try to whenever the step fails, it tries to execute the same step again. And uh, if you, if, the, if, return, if it returns the positive result or success, then it moves to the uh, next step. So to explain this in detail, like here we have a driver dot find element uh, by XPath uh, for the email text box. So let's consider uh, when a driver uh, tries to find this element, it has failed. So uh, maybe because of the loading problem, uh, maybe this element is not loaded uh, because of uh, bad network. So since we have this uh, implicit weight set, then it's going to try once, once again to find the element. Now the element might have loaded and it may result the pause to result or the success then the control moves to the next step so uh, let's consider uh, maybe if uh, uh, the x path given is wrong then this this driver is not going to find this element uh, then it's it will try and try and try until the time of 60 seconds when the time of 60 seconds is over then it's going to throw element not found exception then you may have uh, one question in mind. You are telling that it will try uh, the same step again and again until the time out that is 60 seconds. What is the uh, time gap between uh, each try? Or what is the uh, time gap per, between each poll? Uh, 
so that is going to be 500 milliseconds so if it has tried to find the element and it's unsuccessful then it's going to wait for 500 milliseconds or half a second and then it's going to try one second so it will try uh, so it will go it, it will go to next step it, if it returns the positive or success if it uh, fails again and again it will uh, do the uh, try uh, till the timeout that is 60 seconds and then it will return the exit explicit weight so let's discuss about explicit weight in detail and also i'm going to compare explicit weight and implicit weight parallelly so here i'm going to use the same example that is uh, gmail.com the login page of gmail.com the only difference is i have replaced the implicit weight with explicit weight so let's start you can see the web driver that's been initialized in the beginning and then the highlighted line web driver weight weight equal to new web driver weight so this is the uh, explicit weight so we are here we are initializing the explicit weight and you can see the parameters passed driver and timeout so we have a driver and the timeout i have specified as 20 seconds it can be anything based on your uh, requirement so i have passed it 20 seconds and then next step we are navigating to gmail.com and in the next step we are finding the element of email text box so which returns the web element and then in the next step using the uh, implicit weight that is initialized we are uh, using that and uh, you can see weight dot until followed by expected conditions dot visibility of web element so this is the same web element which we have found in the previous step so here if you observe weight dot until uh, followed by the condition so this is a condition so we are waiting for the condition uh, so that is visibility of the web element so sometimes what happens is the element might have been loaded into the dom but it's not yet visible on the screen so we are waiting for the visibility of this element on the screen here the gmail text box and then in the next step we are sending the keys to the text box so for this condition uh, you can also use uh, uh, many uh, other conditions apart from the visibility so i have defined all the conditions on the right side that you can go through you can just pass the video and go through which can be used for the explicit weight and so this is the uh, one of the difference uh, between explicit weight and implicit weight in the implicit weight you cannot use the condition and uh, for example uh, if the control has come to this point weight dot until and uh, it is it has checked the visibility of uh, gmail text box and uh, if the if the element is visible then it will go to the next step but if it's not visible if it's not visible it won't just wait for 20 seconds and throw the exception but instead what it does is it repeatedly tries to check the visibility of this element so when i say that if it's uh, when i say that it's trying repeatedly for the visibility of the element how many times it's going to try or uh, what is the time gap between each try so it's 500 milliseconds so it's going to uh, wait for 500 if the i mean if the element is invisible then it's going to wait for 500 milliseconds and then it's going to try once again if it's invisible again then it's going to wait for 500 milliseconds and going to try for visibility of the element so until it's going to do the same thing until the timeout uh, 20 seconds in this case and if the uh, timeout has elapsed then it's going to throw the exception so 
yeah that's what you have to remember uh, on how the explicit tweet uh, works and then you have to remember one more thing that explicit weight is defined on the element so here you, it's defined only on this particular web element gmail that is gmail text box uh, but it's not applicable on the other elements uh, followed like you can see the id identifier next which is the next button and also the password text field and also the next button is not applicable on all these uh, remaining web elements because we did not define on that so it's applicable only on the particular element on which user has defined but if you remember implicit weight is applicable on the entire session of the driver so it's like it's applicable on all the elements let's discuss the fluent weight so here we use the same example on gmail login page so here the highlighted section is where we have set the fluent weight the first line fluent weight weight equal to new fluent weight where we are initializing the fluent weight and you can see with timeout so here we can define the timeout that is similar to implicit and explicit weight and the next step is polling so here we can define or we can control the polling here i have given the polling timeout of five seconds i'll discuss this uh, in detail in a minute and then uh, we have ignoring so we can also ignore certain exceptions if you want to so then you can see a uh, web element next element equal to wait until so here we'll have a return of a web element and then we have a apply method uh, so this is the syntax we should follow and then you should concentrate on uh, this step where web element next equal to driver dot find element by id and this is for the next button so this line you should concentrate on and if the control comes to this line and if it successfully finds the element in the first attempt it's going to return this element to this uh, next button and the control moves to the next line that is next button dot click so considering the second case if in the line web element next equal to driver dot find element if it's unable to find this element then it will go and check for the polling so we have defined it as five seconds so here uh, it waits for five seconds and then again it will try to find the element if it's successful then it will return the web element to the next button and then I mean that uh, it will return the web element to the next and this next is returned to the next button on top and then it co the control moves to next button dot click if this is unsuccessful though it's unable to find the element then the same thing continues that is it will wait for five seconds so this will happen uh, until the time of 30 seconds uh, so after, after 30 seconds uh, if it's unable to find the element then it's going to throw the exception so now you can uh, relate oh, so so you can also see that fluent weight is also applicable at element level only uh, so it won't be applicable on the following elements like uh, password and next where we did not uh, uh, define the fluent weight but you know implicit weight is applicable on the entire session of the driver if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and please do subscribe for more videos